Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. We're looking at the Illinois Performance Accountability and Transparency System, IPATS. We recently launched IPATS. Actually, we launched it this week on Monday, January 25th. This webinar is to provide everybody an overview of the system and answer any questions anyone has. Um, currently, um, you know, we've had a couple of days to get into the system. I know most of you were pretty familiar with the system prior to the launch as we've been meeting with all the different OEA folks to kind of go over the system, review the data and make sure everything was looking um, correctly that we were pulling in. For today, we're gonna to be going over a PowerPoint briefly for the first couple minutes, just to kind of give everybody an overview of the objectives of IPATS and how it came about and where it's gonna be going. And then we're gonna be jumping into the TP, or I'm sorry, the IPATS web tools and actually walking through each of the tools and answering any questions you all have on those tools. And then we'll open things up for a larger uh, question and answer session. At any point in time, if you have questions, please put those into the chat and we'll be sure to answer them. And then we'll be taking um, little pauses throughout today's presentation. And if you guys wanna unmute yourselves and ask questions during those pauses, um, we definitely welcome that. Um, I also wanted to note just some housekeeping. Um, everybody who enters the webinar does enter muted. So you will need to unmute yourself if you do need to talk. If you're using your computer audio, there will be a little microphone with a line through it. You'll just click that to unmute. If you called in, you will need to dial star six to unmute your phone lines. Um, and with that, I will go ahead and pass things over to Patty Schnorr with the Department of Commerce, who's going to kick us off by going through the PowerPoint everybody should see on their screen. Good morning, everybody. It's Patty. I'm just thrilled that all of you could uh, zoom in and join this morning. Um, I can't thank you all enough for those that who have been involved in helping on the development of iPads. Um, so I'm just always just can't say enough thank yous in that regards. Um, we've been working on this, I think, a little over a year, maybe a little more time flies um, and trying to put together some more transparency and visibility of performance and other items that um, we want to bring not just to a, a desktop but something that you could have in your back pocket on your phone as well something that's responsive design so um, go ahead and uh, go to the next slide of Olivia. so why ipads um, we want wanted to just create something in addition to the features in IWDS. Um, obviously, the, the system is very helpful and has performance reports and information in there. Um, but especially as of late with our, with our virtual worlds and our remote living, um, having an additional tool that we can all share and, and get on and look at um, that has a little bit more of comprehensive information in one place. Um, again, the transparency, the responsive design, and being able to move from um, one area to the next and have it available. Um, so we wanted to, like, the accountability part of it is not necessarily anybody's going to come after you with a stick and beat you on the head accountability. It's just um, being able to kind of do our jobs better, um, being able to see items um, transparently, and we'll see a little bit more real-time data and the participants going <clears throat> through the system in a different way um, in different views that allows for a little bit more manageability of um, what we're doing and, and overseeing that. Um, transparency as far as just shedding some more light in some spaces that may not have light shed on them. Um, We've talked to a lot of people who, you know, use different tools, see things in different ways. Um, everybody learns differently, everybody absorbs data differently, and everybody retains the data differently. Um, so the fact that you can have a bigger variety and assembly of information and in different visuals and different, not just tables, but graphs and charts and putting colors to it. Um, that's something that helps me, red, yellow, green, my eyes go to that um, specifically to uh, try and make sure that I can do everything I can um, with those transparencies. The relevancy, again, um, for our performance measures, they um, count um, participants who are exited. Um, so there's been a lot of focus on the exiting of, you know, when the participants exit and where they're at at exit, are they, do they have wages at exit and that kind of thing. But we also wanted to be able to bring um, shed light and transparency to those that have not exited yet that are in the system that we can maybe 
start telling a story about those people a little bit better than we have previously. And that's something that's kind of a desire, not just in our state, but nationally. Um, the analytical part of it, getting uh, some more statistical information in there. Another goal is maybe to get some LMI data um, married into our, our workforce data that we can, for example, see if someone, what's, what's the unemployment in that area compared to how we're uh, assisting and helping the people in that area or targeting an area that has higher unemployment to focus on and outreach to that area. So there's, those are things to come. We don't have that in there right now, but there's a lot of things that um, are in store and visions for iPads. Um, integrity, we're always trying to make sure that the data coming in there is accurate, that uh, we're double, triple, quadruple checking against the data in IWDS. Okay, you can go ahead. Um, so the short-term goals were to uh, focus, obviously, on Title I, because that's where we have the data, the most data for the performance indicators. That's our taking that from IWDS, which we have the most visuals to compare and reconcile and track back and forth to to make sure that what we are doing in IPATS is the um, same uh, to the most part as what's in IWDS that it's easily understandable. We didn't want iPads to, to be something that you had to be a data scientist to figure out. Um, it's something that puts the uh, information into an easier format, something that maybe you aren't even all that familiar with the programs, but you would be able to go in there and see from a high level down um, kind of what the lay of the land is, what the indicators are, um, and how well people are doing with those indicators. Um, we want to uh, go into some data validation, some monitoring tools down the road. We're also looking at statistical adjustment models. So those are kind of on the radar for this year yet. Um, Long-term potential, um, we're meeting with our partners on um, an ongoing basis with Title Two, Three, Four, um, with our with the Continuous Improvement Committee, with the IWeb, and that kind of thing. So we're always trying to keep an open canvas. Um, that if our partners would like to share their data and to blend that data with the Title I, that we would have the ability to do that. So you'll see without throughout the system that there are filters that say Title II, III, IV selections. Those are there. They're placeholders. They're something that um, if Title III, for example, Wagner Pizer wanted to share their performance indicator, their wheel of performance indicator information with us, we could put that on a screen and we could have a visible there that would show you title one and three together. So it's things like that um, that we want to try and also um, expand and do with the system. Down the road, next negotiation process can probably be uh, through the system, customizable reporting. Um, there's a whole nother uh, huge project going on with the state and um, that's kind of intermingled nationally as well as the ETPL information. We're going to be upgrading and um, coming up with a, a whole new uh, training provider list, and um, it will be integrated with the credential engine um, system that's a global system. So there's a lot of cool integration and innovation um, projects and things like that going on that as we get things that make sense to include in iPads that will bring some of that information in and put that into one place for you as well. So the data sourcing, again, right now, we just wanna emphasize that what you see in there, the data that is in there is coming for Title I, it's coming from IWDS. So you're never actually inputting any data into IPAT. It's pulling that data out of IWDS because that is the system of record for the state of Illinois for WIOA Title I. So, all the data in there is coming out of, out of the IWDS um, database and systems. You're just seeing it in some different visuals and pictures and graphs and comparisons. Um, we have, I'm kind of looking at my own slide here, there is a login required for iPads. Obviously, there's, gonna, there's PII and confidential information in there because I say you go from the helicopter view down, so you're going to be at a high level looking at it. And if you see things that, oh, I want to see exactly who is in that, a uh, number that I'm looking at that you can always drill down into the numerator denominator view and see a specific level of, of who the people are that are being counted into that particular visual that you're looking at. Um, so there's a lot of different search filters. Um, 
let's see, we don't provide it to outside parties. So it's the same roles as it would be in IWDS. The user's roles are the, are the similar to IWDS and it's not the same. And then it's the same, um, anything, anything you sign acknowledgement form to be in IWDS, um, that is applicable to what you, iPads, because it's the same data. Just because it's in different visuals doesn't make it um, any different as far as the legalities of access. Okay. Um, just to you know, give you some visuals, those are the IWDS screens that are similar to where the data is and how it lies in that screen. Go ahead. And then pulling it out, so you'll see screens, and I'm going to go through these quick because that's where Olivia is going to jump in and show you in uh, real life here. So we have the second quarter after exit, fourth quarter after exit, meaning earnings, second quarter after exit, credential attainment, measurable skills gain. So those are your main performance indicators for WIOA Title I. Um, again, you'll see effectiveness in serving employers. Again, it's more or less a placeholder right now. We do, as a state, report that annually in October. Um, it was a pilot measurement um, as of WIOA. So at this point in time, um, that measurement is um, reported by IDES. Um, we simply send some files to IDES based on the retention with same employer and the penetration rate uh, regs that are in the TIGO for those indicators. Um, not only do we send them files, ICCB sends them files, DHS, Vocational Rehabilitation sends IDS files, and then IDS combines their business files, and uh, Sergio at IDS then um, does the, um, the combining, the deduplication, et cetera, everything that needs to be done to come up with those two rates to report them in DOL. There is very much right now an interest within the state. I've heard conversation after conversation and even in my own heart that we are going to do a lot better job of tracking and um, measuring um, effectiveness and serving employers. Those two rates are right now, though, that's why they're going to look like a placeholder in um, IPATS because it's just done with the four partners once a year. So there's not really any data to pull in that um, can be used, to, used to, to make it visual in iPads, but I didn't want to overlook it because it is one of the main indicators by the OL and down the road, we'll definitely find some ways to put some interesting data and information in there as a state and all the committees that are working hard to um, collect and gather and do the research and analysis on how to do that. We'll be bringing it to life as those come to fruition. Okie doke. Um, so here's uh, just some glimpses of the screens for performance accountability. We'll see the, the little dials there. You'll see the engagement um, area. And then again, you can drill down to your numerators, your denominators. And then you also, she'll also show you how you can um, add other factors if you want to add to the screen. Um, registrants, completers, exeters. So Kidoki, next. Some more screens that she's going to be going through very soon. And then one of the things that's new with iPads, I guess, especially is like the ability to look at one Elwia and another Elwia side by side. Um, uh, we didn't have that ability to do that previously. Um, again, it's just more or less to see for people to see it's like if one's doing something that I'm not that like I might get on the phone and give them a call and see what's going on with their youth program that might be able to be applicable in my area as well. Um, and then the ability just to filter through it easily. I can pick and choose and move my way around and see which ones I want to see. Okay. Um, the participant dashboard is definitely something new. And this again is just to see from beginning to end the flow of the customers through the system um, from the minute that we're planning the participants all the way to exit and then into performance. So we wanted to give people a dynamic dashboard. Um, I believe this is refreshed daily um, to be able to see who's in, who's where, and then also put timers in the background because we know that we have 60 days, 90 days, 120 days. We have these rules that DOL has laid down for us 
that we're needing to follow. And so giving the ability to have a, a red, yellow, green approach to that as well, um, to be able to say, oops, I got like 10 here that are going to need something done with them pretty soon. And being able to drill down again and see who those 10 people are, um, hopefully is going to bring a lot of uh, helpful um, tools to your, to your abilities. Thanks. Next. Um, as I said, we want to move hopefully the, towards the end of this year, mid end of this year, um, bring in some data validation screens. Um, the state used to, for those that were involved in the, in the data validation uh, prior to WIOA, uh, it was a very uh, federal um, micromanaged type uh, process where they had an EDRVS system and they would require um, us to pull down a sample based on what they wanted us to uh, analyze and we'd take that sample population and then it was a very um, intensive file review of each one of those individuals that were in the subpopulations picked and a process that was done every fall. Um, because Department of Labor created an entirely new reporting system, a workforce integration <clears throat> system, the WIPs, and they felt that they built a whole bunch of what they call edits in there. And what edits are means that when Jeff Brown uploads the, um, the report, our quarterly report, each um, quarter to the WIP system, there's a bunch of information and, and edits and, and intelligence in the back of that that says this field should have this in it, or this field should not have more than that in it, or this field should have an integer. Um, so because they put those edits into that system, they feel that the credibility and the integrity of the data that's being reported to Department of Labor from our systems is sufficient enough that they were not going to require to have a federally mandated, federally, again, um, regulated official data validation process. However, they do want a data validation process. And so they pass that down to the states to be able to come up with their own, um, their own system, their own process and policies. So we are and have been working on a way to create a data validation that's reasonable, fair, um, that doesn't uh, overtake the workload, but a manage it's a manageable way to do it. So we've, we're looking into that. We're going to integrate that into iPads. And so those are just what we call kind of wireframes on that slide there. We come up with some design views, and then those will eventually become a screen. Um, there's specifically what you're looking at there is straight by the Teagle. And um, again, it won't be such an intensive process as it used to be, but we are going to come up with a way to do a data validation um, policy and procedure that's manageable and online. Uh, statistical adjustment model as we went through the negotiation process uh, earlier or late last year, I guess, we um, realized with the Department of Labor that the statistical adjustment model that they laid out, we thought um, would be able to be modified and transitioned to a state level model. Um, many states, as we did, found out that they weren't going to be able to just take that model and specifically utilize it for our state. Um, therefore, we've been, um, we um, hired out some folks, some uh, data statistical scientists that have been working on a state model that's getting pretty close to um, fruition on that project and what they're coming up with. So we're, we're going to be meeting um, behind the scenes and figuring out the, that statistical adjustment model that fits the state the best and working through that. We'll be sharing that with the local areas as we um, are putting it together. But we also want to automate that statistical adjustment model in IPAP so, it won't, so that when we do get it all put together, it'll be in here, it'll be next to your performance data, and everything will be packaged in one view. Go ahead. Um, one of the other visibility tools that we want to have in IPATS is the quarterly annual reporting so that you would see um, the, the form, form that it, how it looks after we get it into um, the WIP system and print it out like the different um, target pops and the different um, 
Title I, the adult dislocated worker youth filters on that. And so they'd be able to see that and select it and then also drill down to the numerator denominators and that, that we wouldn't just have the state level pearl, but we would have a pearl view um, by LVA. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on what I just went through? If anybody does have awesome. any questions, definitely type them in the chat or unmute yourself. Um, if not, we'll go ahead and move forward to the demo portion of today's session. And Patty, thank you so much for going through that. That's a lot of great information on what to look forward to as we continue to build out iPads. Um, and then as you all know, we're always looking to collect feedback on your guys' thoughts on um, the data we're currently pulling into the system, but also additional data and resources that we can make available to you all as we look at the future of what iPads will be. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and jump into the demo portion of today's session. Today, we're gonna to be walking through how to access iPads and use the various tools. Before we jump into that, I wanted to start out with a little conversation about the user roles and the users that have access to iPads. So for the first launch of iPaths, we gave access to three different user roles. We have our state level users. So these are the Patty Schnorrs, the Paula Berries, uh, the Mark Burgess, Mike Bakers of the world. Um, they have access to the state level view of iPaths to be able to see what's going on at a state level and then what's going on in each of the individual OEAs. They have the ability to filter all the way down to office, training provider, and the career planner. The next level is our OWEA managers, excuse me, our OWEA uh, administrators. The OWEA administrators have access to a high level view of the state numbers. Um, they can't click on those numbers to see customer lists, but they can see where the state is at as a whole. And then they can drill down to their OWEAs and they can access customer lists at that level. And then they can even drill down further to look at data by training providers, um, career planners uh, and offices. This access is all based off of a user's access in IWGS. So what we do is you have an Illinois WorkNet account, we add you to a group, it goes in and it looks at IWDS to see what can you see in there. And then it allows you to see that same data in um, iPads. So if you have access to uh, like your LVIA and an LVIA 90, you will see both of those in iPads as well. And then we have our career planner roles. Our career planner roles have very similar access as the LWIAs. Um, in IWDS, career planners have access to the LWIA, so they have access to the LWIA and IPATS. They have the ability to filter down on a career planner filter so that they can filter all the data just to see counts for themselves um, so that they can get even further drilled down to be able to work directly with the customers associated to them and IWDS but they do start at a high level LV of view. In order to access iPaths, you're gonna log into your Illinois WorkNet account to get access, but all the access is granted based off of your access in IWDS. We tie to your IWDS accounts from WorkNet. Do you guys have any questions on roles? All righty, so we'll get into the demo portion of today. So you're gonna go ahead and go to IllinoisWorkNet.com and then you will log into your Illinois WorkNet account. Once you've logged in, you're gonna click my dashboard and under your partner tools, you're gonna to see Illinois Performance Accountability and Transparency System. If you do not see this, it means you haven't been granted access. You can reach out to info at IllinoisWorkNet.com to request access um, and we will work with your LWIA administrator to make sure access access should be granted and then get you all set up. Um, and then you will be able to see this in your dashboard. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the Illinois Performance Accountability and Transparency System icon. And that's gonna take us into the tool. For users who happen to get directly to this um, URL, who may not have access, if you try to go to it, you're gonna get a message that says, this is an authentication only system and you haven't been granted access. So we do have checks in place to make sure only people with access can be getting into the system. Once you get into the system, um, you're going to see we start out with kind of a header bar up at the top. We have the iPads logo 
And then we have our navigation of the three tools we currently have available in Illinois Work or in IPATS. And then you have your account information so you can easily sign out and get back to WorkNet as needed. We will be building this menu out with a direct link to the resource guide. So it'll be easy to access from there as well. And then as other information comes available, we can easily add it to the menu. But we're gonna start on performance. So this is looking at our performance tool. You can click this plus icon to get a little additional information on what's going on here. So we have an overview of um, the performance tool and the purpose of why you would use this performance tool. And then we have the actual tool itself. So we start out at a state level view. Right now we're looking at PY20 year to date title one data for statewide counts. And we're looking at our employment rate second quarter measure. So we have that selected in our filter and we're also identifying it in the title of both of the graphs we show. The first graph is looking at the employment rate second quarter for adult and our dislocated worker youth program. We have our bar chart that shows us where we currently are. And then at the end of that, we have some additional information. So we know we're looking at adult. The goal for the state is 77%. The threshold for that is 69.3%. We are currently at 61.42%, which puts us at a status of fail. We're very close to meeting, but we're not quite there yet. Because we're at a status of fail, our graph is going to be red. Once we meet, reach a status of meet, it will turn yellow. And when we reach a status of exceed, it will turn green. So you can easily just tell by the color what your status is. The graph to the bottom is our employment rate slash education rate second quarter after exit. And this is for youth because their measure is a little different. They get put in their own graph with a very specific uh, measure for what that is. Again, we have all the information at the end. You can easily update the performance indicator filter to filter to a di different performance indicator that will update the graph. So you can see for this performance indicator, they're green, so we're exceeding um, our uh, goal. Additionally, you can filter down on program year. So you can filter back all the way back to 2016 data. You can also filter on Quarter, so you can filter to quarters one, two, three, and year to date. And then as Patty mentioned during our presentation, we also have a title filter. Right now we're already, we're only built out for title one, but we do have the additional title showing in here for future development. We have the ability to build this out for them as well. And then we have workforce program. So here's where we can filter to look at a specific workforce program instead of looking at all the workforce programs on one page. So if we click adult, it's gonna update our view from those bar charts and give us more of the style view. So right now we're looking at the adult program performance measures for PY20 year to date statewide. And so we can see all five of our measures. And if we hover over a specific bar chart, it's gonna give us that additional information that was showing at the end of the bar graph. So we get our goal, our threshold, our current, and our status. The color coding for these works just the same as the color coding for the bar chart. Red fail, yellow meet, green exceed. Additionally, you can export these graphs by clicking the three line, the hamburger icon, and then selecting the um, format you want to download the graph in so that these can be used in reports um, or presentations as needed. If we scroll further down on this page, we now get our customer engagement section. So for the adult program, we can see the number of registrants in two different views, new registrants, exitors, and employed at exit. Additionally, we have the ability to filter down to a LWEA level. So um, for this is where when we're talking about users, our LWEA administrators and our career planners will only be able to see the LWEAs that they have access to in IWDS. Statewide users are going to see all LWEAs. Once we select an LWEA, the graphs are going to update to show us the counts for that LWEA. Everything works just the same. You can um, download the images, you get the customer engagement. Um, it's just updated to show the data for the LWEA that's selected, which is identified in the breadcrumbs we show at the top. Additionally, you can export this information. You can export the page data 
meaning it's only going to export the data for the filters I have set. So it would only export for the adult program for LBS 7 for the program year I have selected. Or you can export all data, meaning it's going to export every single piece of performance data that we have in the system. So it would export all the performance measures um, for all the programs for all the LBS, um, and you would be able to see those counts. So that is our graph view of our performance measure. Um, before we go any further on the filters, I did want to point out, we also have a table view. So if you click on the table view, it's going to give you a table view of this data. And you have the ability to um, see all that information broken down in a table. And then you'll see that your numerator and your denominator counts are blue, meaning they're linked to customer lists. So if you click on these counts, it's going to take you to a customer list and show you all the customers that make up this specific count. So we can see the 328 customers who make up this count. If you want additional information on this count, you can click the icon in the right hand column and it'll allow you to pull in additional pieces of information or remove pieces of information on these customers. So you can pull in, you know, case manager, program type, exit quarter, last uh, note date. So when the last case note was added, um, date of birth, last four SSN, you can easily pull in all that information um, to better identify who the customers are that make up these counts so that um, you or the career planners can then go into IWDS and make any updates necessary. Um, Maybe they, uh, you're looking at the uh, denominator and you know this customer should be in the numerator to count towards performance and they're not, and you just need to update something in IWDS, you easily know um, who it is you should be updating. Um, again, you can export this list using the export button. You can also reset the list back to the original view by clicking the refresh button, and then you can jump back to your um, performance information by clicking the back to performance data button. And the last filter I wanted to point out here is um, once you filter down to an organization, you have the ability to filter down even, even further. So you can filter down to an LWIA office. Um, it lists all the offices that are in IWDS. And as you start typing, um, it's going to filter that list and pull up the most relevant um, options. You can also filter by WIO a training provider and career planner. So your career planners can easily come in here and start to filter to their information. And that will update these graphs so it pulls back specifically for the uh, person or office or provider you have it filtered to so you can see the counts specifically for them. Do you guys have any questions on the performance tools in IPATH before we move on to look at our LVIA comparison tool? All righty. So if we click the LVIA comparison up at the top in our navigation, it's going to update the page to show us the LVIA comparison tool. This tool is set up to show us the performance measures for the statewide counts and then for each individual LWIA. So as we scroll down this page, we can see all the LWIAs are listed, including LWIA 90. This is showing the current uh, percentage of where each of the either statewide or LWIAs are for the specific performance measures being pulled in. So for example, the employment rate second quarter for the state is currently at 61.42%. So it's not showing us our targets or anything, it's just showing us where we're currently at. We have this color key at the top, so it's showing us blue is employment rate second quarter, black is employment rate fourth quarter, prudential attainment rate is green, and measurable skill gains is orange. We do have a note here that median earnings is only going to show on the table view. It's calculated in dollars, and these are all calculated in percentages, so we only show that when we're looking at the table view. The way the filters work on the LBA comparison is it allows you to remove or add items to this graph. So maybe we only want to look at employment rate second quarter and fourth quarter. We could easily click the X's next to the other items, and it's going to update the graph to only show us those two specific measures we have selected. 
And you'll see that the color coding updates uh, to account for that as well. So it won't always be that blue equals one thing and black equals the other. It will update based on what you have selected. To add those back in, you just click on the drop down list and reselect those, and they will all be added back into your graph. Additionally, you have the ability to filter by program year. Again, you can go back to 2016. You can also filter down to look at a specific quarter or year to date information. Again, we have the title. Right now, only title one is hooked up. And then we have the workforce program. So it starts filtered at adult, but you could easily change this to look at dislocated worker counts or youth counts as well. And then we have our organization filter. So this works very similar to our performance measure. This is where we can start removing or adding LBAs we want to see. So maybe we want to remove the first couple LBAs. We just click the X's to their name and you'll see that LBAs one through four are gone. If we want to add them back in, we just click on the drop down and start selecting them and then they'll pop back up in this graph for us. Additionally, just like the other graphs that we saw, we have the ability to download these in a variety of formats. So you can filter it whatever way you need to to see a specific uh, LBA comparison graph. And then you can download that image to be used in a presentation or report as needed. Um, if you update a bunch of the filters, removed a bunch of things, changed things, and you want to get back to a um, the view you started with, you can click this refresh button and it's going to reset everything back to the original view of the graph so you don't have to add all those filters back in manually. You can also export this data. The export works the same way where you can export the page data, meaning it's going to export the data based on the filter parameters you have set or you can export all data, meaning it's going to export all the OEA comparison data the tool is pulling in. Additionally, we have a table view here as well. So we can click on the table view, and we're going to get a table view of all the data so we can see for statewide in each OEA what their current employment rate second quarter, employment rate fourth quarter, median earnings, this is where this number is now being pulled in, credential attainment rate and measurable skills gains are. Again, you can filter all this information that's needed, um, reset it and export it. And then I do wanna point out at the footer of each of the tools, you will be able to identify how often the data is updated. So the Elwia comparison tool is updated weekly, every Friday night, it pulls in the updated indicators. So if data changed on Wednesday, it's not going to be updated and showing in the tool until um, you either check it Saturday or when you get back to work on Monday. Um, but each of these tools pull data a little differently. So if you're ever um, wanting to know, you know, how recent is this data, always check the footer and it will tell you when we sync the data with IWDS. And then again, at the top section, they, if you open the tool, or if you open that section, there's a tool purpose, and that is updated on each tool to tell you the purpose of each tool. So this is telling you what the LBA comparison tool is attempting to do for you all. Do you guys have any questions on the LBA comparison tool? All righty. So the last tool I want to go over with you guys is the dashboard. So the dashboard is set up to kind of track the flow of customers, or I'm sorry, the flow of participants throughout the life of a program. Um, so the first things I like to point out are kind of the filters and the customer list, and then we'll kind of walk through the actual dashboard. So we start out with our title filter again. This is only pulling in Title I data. We do have the other titles for um, the ability to build those out in the future. And then we have workforce program. So for our dashboard right now, we're pulling in, you can look at adult, dislocated worker, youth, or other. If you select adult, dislocated worker, or youth, your, your organization filter is going to update to allow you to select LBAs, um, all the LBAs. If you select other, it's only going to allow you to select LBA 90, and then you will be able to select specific program and grants under LBA 90 you will only see those that you have access to. So if you don't have access to LWEA 90, you're not gonna see that. Um, and you will only be able to see the LWEAs that you have access to. Once we select an LWEA, 
we're going to get an office filter and a career planner filter so we can filter the dashboard down even further to look at a specific office where specific career planners counts. So if a career planner is only wanting to see the information relevant to the customers they're associated with, they can filter down to their name and it's going to update the dashboard to show those counts. It is only pulling career planners with customers associated with them. So if for any reason there's a career planner that does not have any customers associated with them, maybe they're new, um, then they're not going to see their name until there's customers in IWDS that have been associated to them. Um, I also uh, want to point out, so we have this little globe icon that shows next to organization. If you click it, it's going to pull up a map view of um, Illinois with all the LBAs, and you can select a specific um, area to filter to the LBA that way. Um, if you only have access to, say, LBA 7, for example, you would only see LBA 7 as an item to be selected on the map view as well. And then on our dashboard to the far right, we have counts. So for each of these rows, we identify the number of customers that make up that row. And if you click on a blue linked number, it's gonna take you to that customer list we looked at and show you the customers that make up that count. You'll have the ability to add in or remove information as necessary, just like the other customer list. All the customer lists work the same, but you can easily see, for example, who are the um, uh, customers that make up the count of 13 for those that have individualized career services open for more than six months. You click on it and it'll tell you who those 13 customers are. If you filter down to a specific career planner, um, this number would update. Maybe it would only be two because they only had two customers that made up that count. Do you guys have any questions on filters or customer lists before we kind of walk through the setup of the dashboard? All right. So the first section we have is our participant overview. This is where we look at the number of planned participants, active participants, exiters, and then the total. Um, when we were doing the mini review sessions with each of the local workforce innovation areas, we had identified a bug where this was showing zero when you were filtered to a program. You can now see that this number is actually showing count. So that has been updated. We also updated the info bubble. So it gives a little bit more information about where this number is being pulled from. For each of these rows, we have info bubbles. So you can hover over them and see additional information on how this row is being calculated or where the data is coming from. So the participant overview section just kind of gives you an overview of what's going on. And then we have our customer engagement section. So this is where we're looking at the number of active participant services, those with individualized career services, those who have individualized career services that are open for more than six months. So you can see this is a subset here. And then those with training services and those with training services that are open for more than 18 months. Um, and this is where I like to point out. So we have some color coding going on here which we also explained in the tool purpose up at the top of the page. And we also explain it on the instructions. What the color coding represents is white is just our general data rows, just general information. Yellow is kind of FYI rows. We're bringing your attention to a customer may, customer may not be moving along, uh, may have um, be sitting. And then we have red rows, which is a high level warning row where action is needed or will be needed very soon. Customers are not moving or haven't had any action. And then we have green rows, which indicate customers are progressing along um, and moving throughout the program. So we wanna see more counts in green rows than we do in red rows. Um, but the, the whole purpose of this dashboard is to be able to give you guys the visibility so you can see what's going on in IWDS and easily be able to go in and make updates as needed. So the customer engagement rows, we have a couple yellow rows, just things to keep your eye on, but nothing major. And then we move to our customer activity section. So this is where we have a couple of um, red rows and yellow rows. And we're trying to indicate customers really are kind of not moving or not having action or activity in their IWDS accounts. So we start out with no career planning, no case notes in 30 days. And uh, we made an update to the customer list based on feedback we got from those mini review sessions. 
you can now see the last date of a case note um, in the customer list. So when you go to that account, you can easily add that item in that data point and see when the last case note was. Maybe it's only been you know, 31 days, maybe it's been 60 days, um, but you can easily see that. And then we have our last active service greater than, and we have a couple different counts. So we have last active service greater than 60 days, greater than 90 days, and greater than 110 days. Um, we added this in um, as we were talking to the Alveas about various customers they would like to have more visibility on. We learned that um, you know some customers sit without getting um, services or having any activity, and they really should be exited if they're not you know, being serviced or having any activity going on. Um, that's not always the case, but uh, there were a lot of people losing track of those customers. So this is just kind of to bring that up and make it a little more high level. And then we have participants with open services for more than six months and participants with open services for more than 18 months. This is looking at any service regardless of the type. So here we were looking at specific types of services these are just looking at um, any services open for a specific period of time. And then we have enrolled in both LBA and state, statewide LBA 90. This row is actually going to be going away here very soon. Um, you will only see it when you're filtered to an LBA 90 program because that is how it's calculated in IWDS. So that's our customer activity section. The next section is our exit information section. So we go from a lot of red and yellow rows to more green rows. So this section is kind of looking at more of our positive outcomes. I'm gonna take a quick pause right here and see if anybody has any questions before we review the last three sections of the dashboard. All right. So our exit information section starts with our number of exiters, and then it looks at those employed at exit and those that are still employed second quarter after exit and fourth quarter after exit. Then it has a count of those employed in training related jobs at exit. This is only pulling customers who are enrolled in training. And then we are looking at those employed in training related jobs second quarter after exit and fourth quarter after exit. So they've um, maintained their employment. And then we have counts for those customers that enter training related employment second quarter after exit and those that enter training related employment fourth quarter after exit. Um, so we show these because even though they may not have exited with employment, they ended up getting employment and that is still counted as a positive outcome. You guys have any questions on exit information? All righty, so we'll move to our beefiest dashboard section, the performance training indicators, measurable skill gains, and credential attainment rate section. So this section is really focused on our training customers, our training participants, and making sure that they get the uh, perform or the measurable skill gain and their credential attainment rate performance measures counted positively for them. So we start out looking at our total training participants, and then we have a subset of those total training participants with measurable skill gains, and those total participants with the credential but without measurable skill gains. We like to pull that number out. Uh, we found that um, a lot of times, you know, measurable skill gains being kind of a new, newer measure that's calculated for performance um, and has that goal we want to make sure that it's getting identified in IWDS because usually when these customers have a credential that indicates they do have a measurable skill gains as well. So we want to make sure that that's getting updated in IWDS so you are getting that positive um, performance measure outcome for those customers. Then we have the count for 30 days left to earn a measurable skill gain, skills gains. Um, this is going to always show zero until June 1st. Um, because you have until June 30th to earn that measurable skill gains. So once June 1st rolls around, you're going to see a count of all customers that still need that measurable skill gains, MSG, updated in IWDS for them. And then we have the total participants never enrolled in training, and then the flip of that, the active participants enrolled in training. And then we have the count of the training completers, and a subset of that for the training uh, complete participants who have earned a credential. 
And then we have our training exiters. And then we have a breakdown of those that unsuccessfully exited training and those that successfully exited training. And I do like to point out here that um, even though these are two subset rows of the training exiters, these two numbers will not always equal this number because you can have customers that were enrolled in multiple training programs. So they might be counted as one unsuccessful and one successful. They will never be double counted in the same row, but they could be um, counted once in each row. And then we have our training exiters that earned a credential. And then we have a subset of those um, who the training exiters only earned a high school diploma, GED or equivalency only. We pull this number out because customers need to either be um, enrolled in post-secondary education, enter military service, be employed, or earn an industry-recognized credential in addition to that high school diploma, GED, or equivalency in order to be counted um, successfully for the um, credential attainment measure. Um, just getting that high school diploma, GED, or equivalency only will not count. And then we have a count of the training exiters that have not earned a credential. And then we have countdowns. So those who have 60 days left to earn and those who have 30 days left to earn. Um, so you can make sure that those get updated and documented in IWDS so that you get those um, performance measures counted for you. And then our last section is our exiters qualifying for performance. So we have those that exits two quarters ago. And then we have a subset of those um, exiters with wages and those with no wages or supplemental data. And we repeat the same process for the exit fourth quarters ago, those with wages and those without wages. We are currently in the process of working with IWDS to kind of redo the way these things are calculated. It seemed to be pulling data a little further back than it should. So um, we're working with them, getting those counts updated, and these numbers will um, be updated and reflected in the dashboard as well. Do you guys have any questions on the dashboard? or any of the iPaths tools at this point in time. Okay. Well, the one last thing I wanted to show you before um, we close out our webinar today and we'll I'll ask for questions again. So if you guys wanna start thinking about any questions or anything you guys do have, um, whether it be about the tool or about future work or uh, presentations that we will be doing. Um, in addition to our IPATS tool, we have also created an IPATS guide. So if you go to IllinoisWorkNet.com and click the partners icon or go directly to the partners page and you scroll down to the program guide for partners section, there is now one for IPATS. So if you click on that, it's going to take you to the IPATS guide. Um, this was also linked in the news item that went out, so everybody should have access to it that way as well. Um, the top of the page just kind of gives a little overview of IPATS. It lets you know who to contact if you have questions, and then gives you a direct link into the um, system. And then under that, we have all resources. So we have our quick start guides. So if you go to these quick start guides, it's broken down by level of user. So we have state level, OEA, or career planner. So you will go to whichever section is applicable to you. And then you can click to either learn more information about requesting access using the performance tool, the OEA comparison, or the dashboard. Once you click on one of those, it's going to take you to a page that gives you high level steps for that tool. So you can see how to first access it. And then you can see how to use it. And it gives you high level steps, but then it also links to detailed instructions on how to use the tool with screenshots and arrows. And it really walks you through how everything is set up and works. Additionally, it has a short tutorial video. So this one is five minutes long that walks through pretty much we went what we went over to over went over today. Um, this one is the longest one. The other ones are typically, I think this one is like 59 seconds. The other ones are two or three minutes. So if you ever need a quick refresher on how do I use that tool again or how do I get around, you can always come to the quick start guides and select the user guide for that specific tool and either get high level instructions, detailed instructions, or a short tutorial video that will show you how to use it.
Additionally, we have a um, practice training materials and video section. So this is where we will list a playlist of all of our tutorial videos. I'm going to be updating this webinar section today with the same kind of playlist and it's going to have today's webinar. And then um, it'll also list out all webinars we have, the agenda, any resources, and upcoming webinars will be identified here as well. And then we have a full list of resources section. So if you're wanting to just get the high level instructions, you can come to the resource section and access all the high level, um, I'm sorry, all the detailed instructions by user. And then we have some additional resources. This page is gonna to continue to be built out as we have more information available. Um, and if you have any requests or um, recommendations on resources we could include to make things helpful, we've listed an email you can reach out to with your information um, so we can get those requests and start building resources out that way. And then the last thing we have in res all resources is our partner tool updates. So as um, we release new updates to the IPAT system, we're gonna post about them here so you can easily come to this page and see what's new and what's going on with IPAT. Uh, January 25th is currently the only update we have because that is when we launched and it just kind of went over that launch. Um, but as we correct things or um, add new things in, it will always be identified in our updates page. And then last but not least, we have our event calendar. So we display all upcoming events. So we have today's webinar listed. It's gonna be moved to the past event with a link to the recording. And then as we schedule any future events, we will always list them here. Um, and those will be sent out to everybody as well via email so you guys can be aware. Um, but you can always check this upcoming event section to see what's going on. We do plan in the coming months to do additional webinars with um, Paula Berry and Mark Burgess on some additional information for how the information that IPATH is bringing back can help you manage your performance. Um, so it's gonna be a little more detailed than just um, how to use the tools um, like with filters and clicking things, but um, how to take that data and really implement it in your day-to-day -day work. With that, that covers everything that we wanted to go through with you all today. So I do wanna open things up for the question and answer portion of today's session. Um, if you have any questions, please definitely now is the time to type those into the chat or unmute yourselves. And I'm going to put some emails in the chat as well. So if you guys think of things um, later, you know who to contact um, and you can easily reach out to us then. Patty, is there anything you would like to add on? Um, I just want to say, I think that um, I wasn't anticipating a whole lot of questions and, and uh, interaction today. So, um, because I just, again, want to thank you all. This was to us phase one, um, a soft launch as we're calling it to officially um, get iPads, um, I guess, on the map and on the uh, Illinois WorkNet um, site so that it was accessible to those that have access and get all the tools out there. Um, we created it, you know, I always say with the users, uh, for the users. So throughout the whole uh, design and development of what we have so far, um, we've had many of you, if not the majority of you, um, tuning in and giving feedback and being on meetings. Um, I know we had a special push the last month, month and a half with every EDR that we met with and gave opportunity for people to zoom in and to walk through it in detail um, and granularly to uh, help assist us with does this information look like it's supposed to and I can't thank you enough again that there was money um, that helped us get the get get some things fine-tuned especially like the plan participant data was one of those things that we realized um, needed some tweaks and we got that done uh, with again the thanks from your feedback um, so we really I just look at this as like the the first very initial phase of iPads that that this was the infrastructure we had to get that data 
um, out of IWDS and visible and have it right. Um, and once we could get this far, we'll be able to create more visuals, um, more uh, aggregated information, more graphs, more charts of um, data, more views. I want to try to get maybe some more map views, um, just different visuals, again, that enlighten and bring transparency to the information that's there. Um, so it's going to, I guess, let it simmer a little while, too, and just let you all be using this and anything, anytime, anywhere, please, please feel free to reach out to me directly, uh, any suggestions you might have. Uh, one of the other things I always say is like um, throughout the throughout my career um, working on things. There was times I would, you know, I like what I'm looking at. I, I like what I have on the screens and this is all helpful. But then I would always keep to the side a, a little spreadsheet or I'd have this Word document table or some little cheat sheet that I would create and make because it would help facilitate what I do and how I do it. So please don't hold back to like, uh, you know, again, send me an email, forward me, share with me any other um, tools or, or things that you're using. Um, because if you're using it and it's helpful, it might be helpful for a whole bunch of other people too. And we could integrate that and utilize that and make it visually um, for more people using iPads to do that. So we are going to move forward with our uh, additional design work as far as getting into data validation, um, doing some uh, quarterly reporting in there. Um, the statistical adjustment modeling tool. Even farther down the line, we want to try to get some monitoring uh, moved over to the system. So just kind of getting all the things and pieces and parts of the puzzle that makes sense to put in here in one place um, is what we're going to try and achieve in the next year to a year and a half. So again, any questions you have, feel free to reach out to me. And I thank you for all your input and all your help. And we'll just keep working away at it. Thank you. Thanks everyone. And we really appreciate all the great comments in the chat as well. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. If not, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and um, I'm sure we'll talk soon. Thanks everyone.